Hey guys, welcome to today's math lesson. Let's start out by doing a math sentence today. We're going to use seashells, rings, and a math sentence that we're going to fill in as we go. So these are two sight words. Let's see if we know what they are. And, is, and, is, is and. <laughs> So this says blank and blank is blank. So our math sentence is going to be and is. We're going to fill these in with numbers. So first we have to count our seashells and see how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six seashells. And no matter which counting path you choose to use, you're always going to end up with six seashells out of this bunch of seashells. So how can we separate these hmm, into a math sentence? I'm going to put one in this ring and one, two, three, four, five into this ring. One and five is six. One and five is six. One and five is six. Six seashells. So how can we change it up and make a different math sentence? What if I put one over here and one over here? And another one over here, so that's one, two. And then I put another one over here, one, two. And then another seashell over here, one, two, three. And another seashell over here, one, two, three. Three and three is six. Three and three is six. Three and three is six. Six seashells. I think there's another way that we can make a math sentence out of six. One, two, one, two, three, four. Two and four is six. Two and four is six. Two and four is six. Six seashells. Now I think there's only one more way to make a math sentence, and it's using one of my favorite numbers. What if we put one, two, three, four, five, six seashells in one ring? How many do we have left in this ring? That's right. Zero. Six and zero is six. Six and zero is six. Six and zero is six. Six seashells. Today we're going to be playing a comparing game using one of my special toys that I've had for this many years. I'm 25 years old and I got this as a present when I was only five years old, just like a lot of you guys. That's how long I've had this. And it's a picnic box. When you open it, inside you have spoons. Knives, forks, you have two different kinds of plate, you have teacups, you have a little creamer. 
You have a sugar bowl with a lid. And you have a teapot that also has a lid. And we're going to be using these tools for our comparing game today. I'm so excited to play with you. So if I want to pick, wait, you know what? I should ask my friend Julius. He's really good at this. Julius, which one should we pick first? I think we should pick the spoon. Okay. So if we were to describe the spoon, how would we describe it. It's, is it heavy? No, it's light. It's not heavy. What if we compare it to the knife? Oh, the spoon is heavier than the knife. It is. Here, do you want to hold both of them? Look, yeah, the spoon is much heavier than the knife. Well, how else could we compare them? Hmm. How can we compare the height of these two if we hold them up next to each other? Hmm, which one's taller? Which one's shorter? Or are they exactly the same? It's hard to tell. Hmm, I know. I'm going to compare using a crayon. So the knife is the same length as this brown crayon. And the spoon is the same length as this brown crayon. So that must mean that these two are the same size. They're both the same height. But the spoon is heavier than the knife. Now, Julius, what should we compare next? I think we should compare the little plates. There's two plates and they look different. Okay, let's compare the little plates. We have one plate and we have another plate. And I'll tell you which one's heavier. Hmm. Mm -hmm. This one, this one's a little bit heavier. And the cool thing about these plates is you can stack them and that makes comparing their sizes really easy. This plate is longer and wider than this plate is. This plate's bigger. So what do we have left to compare, Julius? We could compare the teacup and the teapot. That's a really good idea. Let's compare the teapot and the teacup. So clearly when we look at this one, this one's bigger. It's longer, it's wider, it's heavier. Which one do you think has the most capacity? Which one do you think holds the most liquid? The teacup? or the teapot. Hmm. I think the teacup does. No, no it doesn't. The teacup doesn't have the biggest capacity. The teapot does. <laughs> you know what? I think you're right, Julius. Maybe we should put some water in it and find out. We'll, we'll pour out from the teapot into the teacup. Yeah, let's go do that! Okay. I filled my teapot with water. Now let's see who has the most capacity. Which one's holding the most liquid? There's one cup. Oh, we already know it's the teapot. Two cups. Let's see how many cups fit in here. Three cups. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. The top fell off, but that's okay. I'll just hold it. A little more than three cups of water. 
Hmm. Which one of these do you think has the biggest capacity? The creamer or the teacup? Let's see. If I can very carefully pour this back in to the teapot. If I spill a little, it's okay because I have my handy dandy mat underneath. So I can just wipe it up when I'm all done playing. All right, let's pour, pour, pour. And let's pour, pour, pour. How can we compare which one holds the most liquid? It's hard to do. Hmm, I know. We have another teacup that's exactly the same as this teacup. What if I take this teacup that's empty and I pour the creamer into the cup? <gasps> Whoa, it filled the cup exactly. That means they have the same capacity. I wouldn't have known that by looking at them because the creamer is a different shape. It's not the same length, but it holds the same amount of liquid. It has the same capacity. Now, last but certainly not least, we have two objects that I'd really like to compare. The teeny tiny little lids from the sugar bowl and from the teapot. This one's longer. That's right. Which one is heavier? Hmm? This one's heavier. Which one do you think has the biggest capacity? Is that a word that we would use to describe these? Capacity? I mean, technically, they can hold liquid. They're tiny little holes, but that's not really what they're used for. So no, we wouldn't compare the capacity of these two. It would be like if we compared the capacity of a fork and a knife. We don't have any capacity. They're a fork and a knife. That's not what they're used for. They're not cups that are used to hold liquid or other objects that are used to hold liquid. But we compared them in other ways. Oh my goodness, you guys, I had so much fun with you today. Let's recap. We split six dots into number sentences, and we had a tea party where we talked about capacity, length, width, and weight. What can you do at home to play this game? If you don't have a tea set, you could play with your stuffed animals. You could play with art supplies. You could play, with permission, with a cup and a plate and a knife and a spoon. You could, when you're setting the table for your parents tonight, you could talk to them about capacity. You could say, I wonder if my cup has a bigger or smaller capacity than your cup. <laughs> what do you think that your family would do if you said that? It would probably start a great conversation. You could say, which one is heavier? The squash or the cucumber? Hmm, what do you think, Grandma? There are a lot of fun ways to play this game. 